Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to take a five-headed dragon incense burner and turn it into your very own Tiamat for your table play. Now this is the beauty right here. When I first got her she was actually mostly black with a couple of interesting highlights on her but the cool thing is is she was only ten dollars to purchase from Walmart. Now this is something that has been floating around the various crafting groups here and there. Personally I've never seen this lovely item at my own Walmart until last weekend. So I got my hands on her, I grabbed my paints, I got to town, and this is the end result. So if this is something you'd like to recreate, please make sure to keep watching. Any questions, please feel free to ask me down below. For now, let's get started on making our own little budget-friendly Tiamat. See you later. Bye. Because this video is going around this incense burner as well as specific paints, I'm going to list the paints down in the description below, but do be sure that as you watch the video you can take note because I'm going to show you each paint I'm using. But obviously the first thing you want to do is get this incense burner from Walmart. It's around $10 and here's the cool thing about it. If you take a look here at this little video clip, you can burn about three cones worth of incense and you can get this miniature to basically spew out smoke from all the mouths, the ears, and then there are some exit holes towards the bottom of the base. So a really cool feature to add to this what's going to become the Tiamat Mini. The first thing you want to do with this incense burner is you're going to take a washcloth with some Dawn dish detergent on it and you're going to wipe this clean. This is not something you can put in the water and soak it because it has a porous texture, very stone-like in feel as well. You don't want this to absorb excess water. So once that gets cleaned off, you wipe it down again one more time with just a clean, fresh washcloth. Let it dry completely and we're going to move on to the next step. What you don't realize about this burner when you first get it is that it actually has some really great details to it, but they're hidden because it is this very dark overall color. To fix this, and instead of having to pull up a lot of layers of color, what we're going to do is dry brush on what I'm calling a contrast coat. What you need is a matte acrylic white paint, and we're basically going to be using a dry brush technique all over this stone figure to bring out the details, and you want to make sure you have a nice wide flat brush for this as well. Remember, when you are doing this dry brush technique, you want to make sure you're pulling from the top down to the bottom. You don't want to get into all the nooks and crannies. You want to highlight the higher areas. And in this case, you want to make sure you're covering the mini in about, let's say, a 60 to a 70% amount with this paint. You don't want it perfectly white. You do want those textures showing through, but that's the point. You want to highlight the textures as opposed to having them fade into the dark background. Important note, make sure that your acrylic paints have a thin consistency like maple syrup. Starting with Apple Barrel's Granite Gray, we're going to first start working on what is going to be the white head of Tiamat. Now yes, we've already put on this contrast layer of white, however, it is not something where it's going to be a true white, nothing is really a true white, but when we are done you will get the idea that yes, this is the white head of Tiamat. So what you are going to do with this color is you are going to dry brush this down the scales of the body of the head as well as the main part of the head. Make sure you skip over the inside of the ears, the horns, the side fins as I'm calling them that stick out of the side of the head, as well as the ridge that runs down the back of the body. You will find it much easier to do this with a smaller, wide, flat brush. Do not use the one you just used for the contrast coat. For the fins, the ridge, as well as the inside of the ears of this head, you're going to use this parchment color. Again, dry brushing into those areas. You don't want to do complete coverage, but you do want to get the colors on there so you can see them. And then you're going to take this coffee latte color, and what you're going to do is put this onto the horns of the head. And this is the color we're going to use on all of the horns on all of the heads. And here is a shot of the white head painted up as just explained. Now we're going to move on to the head right next to the white head, and that is going to be the blue head in which we are going to first start with this English navy. Again, this is something you're going to bring down the scales of the body. Make sure you stop at the base of the neck. Once you're done with that section, you're going to move on to the sky blue, and that is going to go on to the throat of the head as well as the inside of the ears. When it comes to the fins, the color you are going to use is just this classic blue from Craftsmart. Again, just put those on the fins that stick out of the side of the head, and that completes the blue head. 
you're going to skip over the center head and move over to the head next to it. So that's going to be our green head. And first we're gonna start with the classic green. Again, this goes on the scales. Next, we're gonna move on to foliage and that is going to go onto the ridge and the inside of the ears. Finally, we're gonna wrap this up with a holiday green and that is going to go onto the fins of the head. Again, be sure to stop at the base of the neck. And now we're gonna jump over to the head that is on the bottom area next to where the green head was. And this is going to be our black head. However, like the white, you can't make something completely black and expect all the details to show through. So we're gonna be using Apple Barrel's pavement. First, that's going to go onto the head itself and the scales. Then we're gonna next jump over to Craft Smart's graphite. And that is going to go inside the ears on the fins and down the ridge of the body. At this point, you should have just that center head left to paint along with the rest the body. To paint the head as well as the rest of the scaled area of the body, we're going to be using Apple Barrel's Tuscan Red. So again, make sure you're using this dry brush technique the whole time. You're going to dry brush this across all the details, bringing them out. And again, this is going to be the head and down through the scales everywhere that is left. This means the two exposed legs, the tails, the back of the body, the neck of this head. Make sure you get every last nook and cranny with this color for those areas. For the neck area, you're going to use Apple Barrel's Ripe Tomato, and then we're going to switch over to using Craft Smart's Apple Red, and that is going to be put down onto the ridge of the body, and then we're going to move on to taking care of the wings and the fins. Those, we're switching over to Folk Arts Apple Red, and again, put this onto the wings themselves, as well as the fins of the red head. And here are some additional stills for you so you can see how things are looking as you progress and how each of those heads need to look by the time you're done with this. Again, I stress, this is a dry brush technique. You wanna get about 60% coverage in this case, but as you can see, it brings out the details a little bit more and it gives you a sense of which head is the head as assigned to each of Tiamat's. Stick with me, I know this is long, but this is honestly the longest section because of all the different colors. So we're now going to take care of the Tootsies of Tiamat and make sure those claws get a coverage of parchment. Next, we're gonna give her plum tongues, yellow eyes, and the teeth we're going to coat with this antique white. And at this point, you can see her pretty much pulled together with the various colors, where the colors need to go and how everything's gonna end up looking. However, to cover up those areas on the stone where you may have gotten some colors in, all you need to do is take some jet black and go back in with a small brush and paint over those areas where your paint brushes may have slipped. With all the different colored heads and the body, it's easy to forget that there is this rock that she's perched upon. We are going to address that now with its base colors. And in this case, you want nutmeg brown. You're going to dry brush that across the rock areas. Allow that to dry. And when you're done, you're gonna move on to using the graphite gray again. And again, dry brush over those areas. And now you are officially done with getting the base colors onto all the different parts of Tiamat as we have just gone through in this section of the video. Allow this to dry completely and we're going to move on to a black wash. This is a mix I created myself. It's four parts distilled water, that's important. Two parts airbrush thinner for your paint. And then depending on how intense of a black you wanna make this, one to two parts black paint, I end up going more towards the one than the two. To test your wash, what I always do is take my thumb, I put some wash on my thumb, and if it shows all those lovely details, your wash is good to go. You just wanna make sure it's not completely muting out the flesh tone of your skin. You will apply this wash everywhere on this figure. However, you want to do this as the figure is upside down. I found it helped to hold it from the inside where is that hole for the opening of the area where you can put the incense in and then just make sure you allow it to dry overnight in this upside down position to allow this wash to settle in those deeper grooves and areas to really bring back out some details that may have been lost a little bit between the contrast coat and the base coat colors. Now that the wash is completely dried, we're gonna go back in and start adding in our highlights with the dry brush technique. For the white head, which we're going to use and specifically use is a gloss white from Apple Barrel on the white head itself. And this you're actually going to dry brush pretty much over the entire part of the head, except for the horns and inside the mouth and the eyes. And this is just gonna raise up those details that are the tips of the scales, as well as the ridges of the throat. Again, keep it to a small flat brush. And this shows you the difference that putting on this highlight will do for the details on the figure. For the highlights on the green head, we're going to first use classic green from Craft Smart, and that's gonna go on the scales in the head. And then for the other areas like the ridge and the fins, we're going to use the citron color green. For the blue head, the scales and the head get classic blue. And then for everywhere else, the ridge, the fins, and that little bit up on the nose, you're going to be using the sailing sky from Craft Smart. 
Now for the black head, which sounds extremely misleading because we're not actually going to be using black at this point, the head and the scales of the body are going to be getting the graphite gray from Craftsmart. Then we're going to switch over to the granite gray, and that again goes up on the ridge, uh, down the back, around the base of the horns and the ears, and on the throat section of the black head. And yes, I know they're grays, but trust me on this one. Now on to doing the highlights of the main head. We're going to first start with Craftsmart's orange. This is going to go on to the throat as well as onto the fins and inside the ears of the body as well as the back ridge that goes along the back and wraps all the way down the body and across the tail. Next we're going to take apple red and that is going to go on to the scales of the body as well as the main head section of the body. Again, do the dry brush highlight technique on this and you're going to wrap it up finally by using the ripe tomato and that is going to be put as a dry brush across the wings of the dragon. As for her rocky perch, you're then going to go back to the coffee latte color and you're going to dry brush that across the rock area and then move on to sunkissed peach and use that as well as your last layer of dry brushing on the rock itself. And this is pretty much all those highlight details that we have left for the most part for Tiamat at this point. There are going to be a couple more details you'll want to add on to her to keep her in the chromatic theme if this is the finish approach you want to take. So keep going with me just a little bit longer on this one. Now we're going to move on to doing the color washes. As you can see here, I decided to switch over to using Citadel's Drakenhof as well as its Agrax Nightshade and Earthshade respectively. So first you're going to start off putting the blue shade onto obviously the blue head, but surprisingly you're also going to add this to the green head and then on the head and scale section of the black head. The Agrax Earthshade you are then going to put onto the red sections of the body. The white head itself you are done with. You are not doing any further washes, leave it alone. As for the last little bit, what you need to do is take your black wash that you have made or procured somehow and put that onto the throat and the ridge area of the black head of the body. And like before, make sure this is all being done while the figure is being held upside down. The last couple steps at this point are for the chromatic factor. So if you want to get that chromatic finish, just make sure you take care of these last two steps. You first want to take the suede from Craftsmark and you are going to dry brush this on the horns of the body. Then what you're going to do is take a flesh tone wash and you're going to put that on the inside of the mouth and along her teeth. Allow both to dry completely and at this point you'll have the chromatic look of Tiamat. This is a perfectly fine look to leave it at. Make sure you take your Krylon Max crystal clear to seal this very well so you don't have any chipping or anything happen after you put on all this work painting this up. If you want to take this to the next level then let's keep going by adding in the metallic factors. The first metallic we're going to jump into is Folk Arts Royal Gold and that is going to go onto all the eyes of Tiamat. Literally just dot those eyes where the yellow was to cover it with the gold. Now we're going to move on to the Inca Gold from Folk Art and that you're going to use on the horns as well as lining the inner ridge areas of the eyes just to enhance the eyes a little bit more than what they already are. For the throat and belly as well as the ridge of the red dragon section you're going to take Craft Smart's bronze and again drag that across not very heavy very lightly to add the metallic sheen to these areas of the body. The wings are going to be getting the royal ruby treatment or something comparable to a very red metallic just on the wings. Now we're going to use white pearl on the white head and again that's going to be the throat, the fins and the ridge of this particular head. Also make sure you're getting inside the ears with this color as well. For black we're moving to Folk Arts Sterling Silver and again same thing put that on the throat the fins the ridge to highlight those areas of this head. Blue is getting blue eyes pearl again throat fins ridge inside of the ears. As for green I decided to actually use straight gold from Craftsmart and again that's going to go on the ridge on the fins inside of the ears and on the throat of this head. Now take some clear glue, I used Elmer's, and what you're going to do is take this glue and you're going to coat the inside of the mouth and the tongue and the teeth to give it that sheen of moisture on each of the mouths of Tiamat. And make sure to let all of this dry completely before taking your Krylon Max Crystal Clear spray and sealing this up to protect all those lovely paint details you've just put into this figure. And here is the final look for our metallic additions to our Tiamat Mini made from an incense burner. 
Now I thought it'd be fun to do this little video clip for you so you can see her in action. I do recommend you put in at least two to three cones to really get her smoking. But when you put this on the table, it really has a huge impact. And I, of course, am going to include some stills after this video so you can get some closer up views of this. It's completely up to you if you want to take this to the metallic level or if you would care to stop at the chromatic level. I wanted to give you both options. But as you can see, by taking this all black with some highlighting incense burner, you've really created this massively cool, massively interesting figure that you can put onto your table to act as your tea mat for all about maybe 20 bucks once you include the cost of the incense burner and the paints you'll need to get from Walmart. It's all there for you to access. I hope this is a project you feel comfortable taking on. Again, if you have any questions, you can comment down below or email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Again, this was my take on Tiamat on a budget. I really enjoyed doing this, and I encourage you to do so as well. In terms of size, she really does have that massive presence. And again, thank you so much for watching. If you've liked it, hit that like button, and feel free to subscribe while you are here. Have a great one. That's the printer. We're printing a crocodile. There's actually going to be two of them. Yeah, I'm thrilled. Tiamat! I've spent a lot of time with this beauty. We're best of friends now. I worship at the altar of Tiamat at the moment. She pity. <laughs> She's falling! No, no falling. We don't want to falling, no. Alright, let's see if that worked. Think it worked? We'll see.